What if I told you that Alinghi Red Bull Racing has made their first significant alteration to their AC75 and it had implications for the deck design of their cut boat for AC37. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Um, lots of interesting stuff happening last week. Uh, hopefully get a bit of a reaction video out to the uh, INEOS LEQ12 launch, their new test platform. But something that snuck under the ra radar and the reason for this additional video is essentially Lingi Red Bull Racing launched a new bit of kit on Friday and it has implications for the design of their hull and it links into the rule query that I mentioned in a previous video. Let's dive in and take a look. This is what arrived on the back deck of Lingi on Friday. Those eagle-eyed monks you probably recognize this device, but fortunately those not so keen on the history, flip that the right way up, and you can see that this contraption lying on the deck with a load of cables coming out is in fact the main sheet, and you're warned, do not fully retract without rod terminal. This is the first alteration that Alinghi Red Bull Racing has made to their boat. Now, if you're not familiar with what they had, they've bought um, T. I, he, I think that's pronounced right. So they bought the first Emirates Team New Zealand boat and they've been sailing that with a boom and I'll just pull up a picture of the boom contraction so you can have a look. So this is the boom they had and um, yeah, you'll see that's the boom. This is the hydraulic cylinder which actually remains quite similar in both systems. Um, but yeah, they did have a boom. They didn't have any secondary hydraulics um, in here. Um, so that was basically what Alinghi has been sailing with, but um, yeah, on Friday they rolled this thing out on the back deck. Now this is actually very similar to what Emirates Team New Zealand, if not identical to what Emirates Team New Zealand pioneered in the last America's Cup. And what we've actually got here is three hydraulic cylinders. The one with the thickest hose, the central one, and that takes the main sheet loads, um, sheeting on, sheeting off, um, all the leach tension, etc. You then have these two secondary hydraulics on either side, which attach to either mainsail skin and act as kind of outhauls, but probably better referred to as like a clue board. And they affect the sheeting angle on either um, skin of the mainsail. And they will affect when you pull on main sheet tension, how much you're pulling um, along the foot and pulling depth out the sail and allowing the top to twist, twist off versus how much you're pulling down the leech, which firms up the leech, gives you more power and allows more depth and drive in the bottom of the sail. Now, in AC36, a previous cup, um, Emirates Team New Zealand pioneered this system. And the, I believe one of the reasons they did wasn't just about the main control it was actually about their boat and how that was configured this is a rather grainy grainy image but it shows their mass rotation point and you see it's on a pedestal so the deck either side of this is uh, is dropped down lower that gives you very little below deck space to house hydraulics and systems so you effectively then have to put all those hydraulics up between the mainsail systems which is what we see a Lingi launching with, with their boomless setup. Front on, you can see this in action, lower deck either side, and actually their mass rotation point is probably in here somewhere, so they're getting an extra bit of um, sail area, um, and it's actually lowering the centre of effort in their sail as well, which uh, effectively gives them a little bit more sail carrying power. Compare that to Luna Rossi, who had a beautiful boat in the last cup, really um, fair lines, um, but you can see the section of it is a lot fatter front on, and that's because housing within that hull 
was their carrier for their main sheet hydraulics. We refer to that as the boom below, um, the beast within uh, Luna Rossa. Now, the benefit of that is if we look at um, uh, this photo here, really smooth, sleek deck. Um, and again, uh, just a nice fairing on the bump cell. They probably had some hydraulics to adjust the sheeting angle, but actually the main sheet tensions were run in a blow deck boom. Now this Emirates Team New Zealand system, it seems like quite a few of the other boats are following this design philosophy. So first of all, let's look at uh, Emirates themselves. This is their AC40, and hopefully you'll recognize this contraption which is on the deck, because it's very, very similar to what Alinghi have on their back deck. You've got three hydraulic um, rams. One is the main sheet one, the larger one. Then these two um, rams here that attach to even main mainsail skin and we can see it in this next picture actually attach the sail we'll zoom right in for you there you go you see these two rams attached to either skin of the mainsail and can work them like outhauls or clue boards affecting the sheeting angle that this main ram has on the main sheet so um, the more you move those rams forward pull up the next picture um, the more these rams move forward um, on this track, the more the main sheet is pulling depth out of, flattening the bottom of the sail, and the less tension you're pulling down the leech of the sail. Um, so that lets the top of the sail twist off. So really neat kind of mainsail control system. The downside to this, and you can kind of see it in this picture, is the gap between the sails, but you can also see it um, in the previous cup of a get a nice picture here. Yeah. Again, you can see the gap between the cells. You end up with quite a fat clue because all that hydraulics, which Luna Rossa were very cleverly, cleverly hiding below the deck, is now in the clue of the sail. And even if you compare it to a team like Ineos, who had a boom, they were, you know, putting the boom between the main sail skins, which you know obviously doesn't allow the greater shape of the sail. But again, it was giving somewhere further forward in the boat for those hydraulics to be housed. Whereas this is all in the clue, so you end up with quite a fat um, clue on your sail, which maybe isn't the best aerodynamically. Um, the other downside to it is you end up with um, often more lines on the deck um, for the mass rotation system. So I'll pull up um, this picture. You kind of see there's a little um, thing coming off the side of the mast here, which is a bar to rotate the mast. Interesting thing, there's pros and cons to this. Like I said, the con is a fatter clue. Um, the pro is that it lifts all the hydraulics from below deck so you can lower the deck. So that brings us to the philosophy, are Alinghi, when they launch their boat, going to have a lowered, sleek deck? And what will the other teams do? I'm really interested to get your thoughts on that. Tell me if we're going to see more lowered decks like um, Tira Hutiai had in the last cup or are we going to see um, more Luna Rossas? Okay, so speaking of Luna Rossa, they've just launched their um, LEQ12. So what have they done? Having a look at here, this is Luna Rossa's LEQ12. And again, they've gone for the Emirates Team New Zealand setup with two hydraulic rams on either main sail skin, adjusting the sheeting angle, and then the actual main, main sheet on a, on a huge ram um, in the middle. The reason for that, you can see in this cutout, and um, yeah, if I bring this photo off, which shows it really well, is they've gone for a lowered deck. It allows them to have a really slender deck, lifting all these hydraulics above. But this picture does kind of um, show the downside to this system in the same way. First of all, you can see there's quite a um, fat clue. So you really want this exit of the sail to be pretty narrow. It makes it possibly hard to get the shape you want in the bottom of the sail. You've also got this stuff on deck. So you've got a hydraulic ram attached to a little wing bit which rotates the mast. So that wing bit is on the mast here um, coming out. So you've got all that stuff on the deck which is a bit of an aero drag as well. So pros and cons to this system. But we are seeing all the teams which are sailing at the moment. So everyone apart from Ineos is sailing with um, the same main sheet control system and possibly points towards more lower decks like we saw on um, Tirahutai because 
that's basically one of the main benefits is it allows you to um, lower your deck and uh, get more of the you know crap that's associated with main sheet control from below deck and put it between the main sail skins so hopefully that's interesting i think this is going to play and play because we've also had that rail rule query which is asking about how mass rotation links to a boom and links to the the clue and the traveler and that was a feature which was seen on Luna Rossa and is seen on boats with booms and yet we've got no one sailing with a boom so someone's put a rule query in about something that no one's using which to me says that well, either it could just be a little bit of a, a dig at another team um, or to spread confusion, or most likely someone is still thinking about using a boom. So this um, design path isn't dead and we're going to see lots more on it in this America's Cup. So cheers and uh, stick around. Coming up shortly, there'll be a first reaction to the Ineos test boat there, LEQ12. Uh, me and the boys will be running through that. Catch you around.